Sony Picture Profiles. How do they work? What do they do? In this video, I'll go over the picture profile settings using a Sony A7R Mark III. Now, the following four picture profiles are going to require some grading in post. I've also recorded some test footage using each of these modes and I used aperture priority mode while doing it to try and keep exposure levels similar between the modes. PP7 uses the very popular S-Log2 Gamma combined with a specific color mode s gamut that's been designed to work really well with that gamma curve. PP8 features S-Log3 and also a different color mode called Eskimut 3 Cine. Also a very specific color mode developed by Sony to work really well hand in hand with this S-Log3. Then PP9 is again a gamma curve S-Log3 but a different color mode. And then PP10, the last one. This is a funny one. I mean, what does that mean? Basically, this is an HDR setting that's using a hybrid log gamma and a very specific color mode. Now, before you get excited about HDR, this is not true HDR like in photography where you can get a crazy dynamic range in your um, the footage. Basically, this HDR mode has a slightly higher than normal dynamic range and it's been designed to work with HDR TVs. It's sort of halfway between s logs and normal gammas. Now, when you compare footage shot with these four modes, you'll see that the s log footage looks pretty ugly. It's flat and it's gray and you can see you're going to need to do a lot of grading in post to be able to use this. But you can see that you have a lot more information here than in some of the other picture profiles. Your shadows are nice and open so you can do a lot with them and your highlights are more subdued with quite a lot of detail in it. And you can see that s log 2 and s log 3 differ slightly from each other also combined with the different color modes that you're using. Now there's a massive debate on which one is better. Your scene and post production steps will definitely determine which one to use. If you're going to use any of the s log gamma curves, the ISO that you can shoot at is limited to 800 or above. On some other cameras, it's even higher. So that is quite a limiting factor. So that means you can't use this S-Log out there in bright sunlight without using heavy ND filtration in front of the lens. Why does Sony do it? It's probably that in that range the chip responds the best to dynamic range. Now if you find that your shadow areas are a little bit noisy after grading, it is suggested that you slightly overexpose your footage when using these S-Log gammas. Slightly, that is. Now in S-Log, the footage can be really difficult to work with on set because it's flat and ugly. Now a handy tip, so you can use a setting called Gamma Display Assist. It mimics what the graded footage could look by by applying a correction gamut to the footage on the monitor. It only affects what the footage looks like on the monitor. Now I would suggest that you just leave it on auto for best results if you want to use it. I hope this video will help you to get more out of your Sony camera. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe.